Hello, this is the Search for Truth program with me, John Martin, and Brian Johnston. 15 minutes of Bible teaching and hymn singing. And the Bible teaching is Brian's new series on the journey of the ark. Today's subject is called Christ-Centred Obedience. So let's enjoy a hymn about the obedience of the Lord Jesus. For as we're learning, the Ark of the Covenant reminds us so preciously of him. And then Brian will bring us today's study. What grace, O Lord, and beauty shone around thy steps below. What patient love was seen in all thy life and death of woe. Last week, we saw from God's Word how the journey of the Ark of the Covenant, which we hope to follow in this series, was a journey which began at Mount Sinai. It began there, for it was there that it came into existence at God's instruction. God used a man called Bezalel in the construction of the Ark, and his name means in the shadow of God. Bezalel was filled with God's Spirit, and so he was equipped for the task of forming the Ark which symbolises Christ. We drew the lesson that in every spirit-filled life, lived out in the shadow of God, there will be the formation of a resemblance to Christ. Today, we want to illustrate the teaching from the story of the Ark on the Move of how God wants our lives to be Christ-centred lives. We come now to the book of Numbers, the fourth book of Moses. The book of Exodus deals with the Israelites being brought out of Egypt and coming to Mount Sinai, where on condition of their obedience, they became the people of God. It was there God gave details of how they were to serve him and how he'd live in his tent or tabernacle in the middle of all their tents. Chief among the furnishings of that tabernacle house in which God lived among his people was, of course, the Ark of the Covenant, or as it was sometimes also called, the Ark of the Testimony. The next Bible book, the book of Numbers, is mostly taken up with what happens when the Israelites, now the people of God, journeyed on from Mount Sinai through the desert. Chapters 2 and 10 tell us that whenever they broke up camp to follow God's leading in the pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night, They couldn't go forward just in any old order. No, God said that the tribe of Judah, along with Issachar and Zebulun, had to set out first. Then came the tabernacle, followed by the tribe of Reuben, along with Simeon and Gad. Then came the ark carried by the Kohathites. The other Levites accompanied the tabernacle, attending to its transportation. Following the ark, came the tribe of Ephraim, along with Manasseh and Benjamin. Finally, bringing up the rearward, was the tribe of Dan, along with Asher and Naphtali. So, if we had been able to get a bird's eye view of the children of Israel as they moved across the desert sands, we'd have seen the standards of Judah and Reuben going on before the ark, and the standards of Ephraim and Dan coming up behind. In other words, the ark was central to the people on their travels. From that, 
I believe God wants to teach us that our life is to be a walk with Christ, the Christ who was symbolised in the ark long ago. More than that, he must be central to our lives as we journey on with God. It's a powerful reminder to me that God's word is living and active, as Hebrews 4 and 12 says. For out of a chapter full of apparently dry instructions to Israel about the order of their march, there comes to my heart a challenge as to whether my life is a Christ-centred life or not. As if to ensure the point wouldn't be lost on us, God made the ark very distinctive while on the move. Its uppermost covering was a blue cloth. Everything else connected with God's house was transported under leather coverings. So the central, blue-covered ark would be particularly striking. All the more so because God had made a particular association with the colour blue. In the 15th chapter of Numbers, we find the story of a man who broke God's law by going out and gathering sticks on the seventh day, the day of rest. After consulting the Lord, Moses was told to put the man to death for his disobedience. To prevent such a thing happening again, God commanded there and then that all Israelites should attach a cord of blue to the bottom of their robes. The idea being that whenever they saw one another's robes, they'd be instantly reminded of the need to obey God's commandments. So God associated the colour blue with obedience. Remember that while on the move through the desert, the ark was visibly covered with a blue cloth. Later, God was able to look down on the perfectly obedient life of his son, Jesus Christ, as he journeyed around among the Israelites of his day, in particular as surrounded by the twelve apostles. Listen to how the Apostle Peter gives a little thumbnail sketch of that wonderful life, the most beautiful life that this world has ever known. These words are taken from his preaching to a non-Jewish audience, as recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 10. Actually, in the few words that follow, it's almost as if we have a summary of the whole of Mark's Gospel. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. The hymn says, We will remember his wonderful life, doing thy will. Perfect obedience, mid sorrow and strife, led him to Calvary's hill. Jesus, our Lord, loving and giving each step of the way. Lord, we adore him who came from thy side long, long ago, leaving a glory that hung could provide, coming to suffering no more. Jesus, our Lord, wonderful gift of the Father of love. We will remember his wonderful life, doing thy will, perfect obedience mid sorrow and strife, led him to Calvary's hell. Jesus, our Lord, loving and giving each step of the way. Yes, what a wonderful life of obedience to his Father's will. 
That's the point the Apostle Paul emphasises in the famous Bible passage found in Philippians chapter 2. Speaking of the Lord Jesus, it says, He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. There it is. There's the obedience, so totally characteristic of that life of the Lord Jesus here on earth. Surely his God and Father had looked forward to it from the days of the shadows. Remember the Bible tells us the law and all associated with it were simply shadows projected in advance of the reality that was coming in Christ. The ark, draped all in blue cloth, proceeding in the midst of the people as they traverse the desert sands, is just one of those delightful shadows that we get of the striking obedience of Christ as he went about doing good in the centre of the twelve apostles and all the surrounding crowds. And what of us today? Is our obedience noticeable? In the measure that Christ is truly central to our lives, it will be. Paul speaks of others glorifying God for the obedient confession that some Christians were giving to the gospel of Christ. May God help us to live lives that are Christ-centred, in which our obedience is as strikingly different as the blue covered ark was from all the other tabernacle furniture when on the move. Thank you for being with us today and if Brian's study has raised any questions in your mind do please write in to him. If you'd like any points clarified he'd be glad to correspond with you. We're always glad to hear from friends and a special thank you if you've written in recently. The talks are available in written form of course and I remind you once more how you can obtain the transcript book of these 12 studies so you can get more out of the radio talks by reading and studying the contents. It's available online. Either you can get it yourself by downloading a copy from churchesofgod.info forward slash media or if you're not able to do that and need to request a hard copy book, just write in and ask for the title The Journey of the Ark. You can use email or the post, and here's our address. Search for Truth, Hayes Press, The Barn, Flaxlands, Royal Wotton Bassett, Swindon, SN4, 8DY, UK. Our email address is sft at churchesofgod.info. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, talk. And you'll join me again next time for another study in the journey of the ark. Remember, if you would like to ask any questions or make any suggestions as to how the programme could be more helpful, do write in. We're always pleased to hear from you. So till next time then, it's goodbye and very best wishes from our Bible teacher Brian, our producer David, our singers and me, John. So see you again soon. And in the meantime, we wish you God's richest blessings. Lord,